the bottom line, what that really means is that you love the process. And that number one element in all these things that you have to do is love the process. The major difference, and there's a lot of similar similarities between the NFL and climbing mountains, but you got to get vertical. There's just no substitute. So what I was doing is I lived in Manhattan Beach, California, mm. right at the time, five years ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just like Long Beach, beautiful beaches right along, you know, it's, it's elevation zero. And, and uh, I decided to move my entire life over to Sun Valley, Idaho. We live at 6,000 feet. Every single day I go up in the mountain, every single day. I climbed 1,800 feet today and just straight up. I'm training for more mountains coming up. We can talk about those later, but you know, it, what, what I think one of the things that, that, you know, when you're, especially for me as a, as a receiver in the NFL, a lot of my game was burst and sprints and, and route running and those types of things. And you're not going straight uphill. And with, when you're climbing these mountains, that's what you're doing. And people that have an experience that they can just seriously hurt, um, you know, from their, their hamstrings and their quads when they're going up or coming back down. And that can a lot of times make the difference between failure and success. So in the mountains that you've climbed in those seven summits, what about the other surrounding areas within those countries? Was there any country or even city about that that stood out with the geographic or anything like that away from the mountain? Yeah, I mean, each one is amazing. You know, I mean, I, I would think in, in relative to that question in today's um, environment, the highest mountain, ironically, in Europe is in Russia. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, who goes to Russia? Um, I did. I, you know, I was in Moscow. I was in Leningrad. And when we finally got kind of a planes, trains, and automobile, automobiles down to Caucasus Mountains to climb this mountain called Mel Elbrus, it sits next to this, this other country called Georgia. And when we were there, uh, there had been a, a – the, the, the Russians had shot down a plane or something from Georgia, and there's all this high tension and conflict, and there's there all these soldiers running around with machine guns, and we were told not to go too close to the border and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, when you're in these other countries, you got to beware. But – you know, another country that I absolutely fell in love with, with was Argentina. The highest mountain in South America is a mountain called Aconcagua, 23,000 feet. And a town called Mendoza. And I didn't know this at the time, but Mendoza <laughs> is where they make all the Malbec wines. Mm -hmm. oh. And, you know, so it, it's cheap, too. So, you know, we had a lot of time, <laughs> good time I mean, for taking and drinking. You should have brought uh, Kenny. Would, you should have brought Kenny. <laughs> you know, Kenny would have been my wingman on the way down there, man. He would have been, he would have fit right in. But it's a town kind of like, uh, well, it's much bigger than Napa, but it's it's in that vein, you know, of all these different vineyards and things like that. But it's just, it's it's just a great way to travel the world and see it in a way that, you know, normally you wouldn't do those types of things. As everybody knows, we are talking to former NFL receiver Emmy Award winner for searching for the summit, Mark Patterson. You know, Mark, when we watch the game of football, it, it's so intense. It's mental. It's abusive to the body. And that's why they say only an NFL player lasts for three years. And if you're lucky, uh, you play a little bit longer than that. When you look at the game today more than it was when you played, what is different that you have seen from when you were playing? Well, I, I think there's less physicality. I mean, certainly there's there's incredible hits and everything else, but the the referees and the rules of the game now are really really protecting guys like me, the receivers coming across the center. Safeties like Ronnie Lott just can't tee up against you and knock you out like they used to do. And if you take any kind of hit to the head, you know the flag comes out. And you see this time and again. Then you take a look at the quarterback. Guys like Tom Brady has probably had a major effect on his career, the longevity. Drew Brees, for, for, from the standpoint of those guys not um, being able to be hit, you know, once they release the ball and they're really, you know, on it in terms of blowing the whistle and things like that. I think in a lot of ways it was more violent back in the day. Um, maybe the players today are a little faster and stronger and, and bigger. They seem to be. But violence is violence and hits are hits. And it's just, you know, I mean, it didn't it, – it was a normal day with the Raiders every day in camp for a brawl to take brace. I mean, that was just, that was just like going and getting some water, you know, people fighting. It's just the way it is. And they, they seem like they really hold that back now. And the kickoffs are, are structured now where there's not nearly as much, you know, violence and, and high intensity hits running down because most of the, most of the kickers, they've moved it up a little bit. So most of the kicks are going out of the end zone and things like that. So, you know, it's still a brutal sport. Um, those guys are intense. They're playing the game the way the game is intended to be played, but with all these different injuries, especially with the CTE stuff going on in the NFL, they've had to throttle back and try to protect those guys a lot more. Mm. 
So either NFL or in college as well, do you have a favorite football moment in your career? Oh, man. I, I Look, at, I've got so many. You know, I, I was fortunate to be on the uh, – we my, my senior year, we were – number one in the country most of the year and late in the season we lost to USC in a close game and and we ended up going to the Orange Bowl we were the first Pac-12 team to ever go to the Orange Bowl um at USC went to the to the to the Rose Bowl and uh we played Oklahoma and this is back when the boss was playing and and Switzer was the coach and they had all these big characters on the team and yeah. nobody thought we had a chance we ended up beating um Oklahoma I happened to catch the kind of the winning diving catch in the end zone with a couple couple minutes to go to take our team ahead so you know certainly you know you remember your first play and you remember your last play and I happen to have you know a great play then and then you know look at I I I I went from kind of a hardcore very regimented very disciplined system at the University of Washington with Don James and then I go down to the Raiders you know it's L Davis and I was there I was kind of part of the new blood that came in and and there was still a lot of those 1983 holdovers um, from the Super Bowl, Marcus Allen, Jim Plunkett, um, uh, Cliff Branch, Matt mm. Millen, Lyle Zato, Howie Long, um, Lester Hayes. Uh, the list just went on and on. Henry Lawrence. I mean, all these legends. And, you know, every Thursday night they had a, a camaraderie night. And, you know, uh, Kenny would have fit right into that <laughs> as well. Because it was, it was going out, creating a lot of mayhem, a lot of drinking. And, and, you know, that's the way that we bonded back in the day. And it was great. I loved it. You know, and those guys took me in. Hmm. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny does look like the stereotypical drunk Raiders fan. <laughs> he, he looks like the kind of whatever fan would do anything. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, uh, anytime, it, the story that Kenny told us last week, it, he has, he used to do a show and he po- posted it up on YouTube And it got suspended because he recorded himself chasing after geese because they crap or they do all these terrible things, eat your food. So he ran after them into a lake or a pond after them and tried to grab their feathers. I mean, I I mean, this I love Kenny. Kenny's in his own little world, but he is unique. Love that. (laughs) We are talking to former NFL receiver and Emmy Award winner for searching for the summit, Mark Patterson. Last question for me, Mark. When you look at everything that's happened in your life, everything has come to then and now. What stood what, what in your career in football? What stood out the most, and what stands out more than ever now? that your life being at 60 years old? Well, you know, this is going to sound weird to you, but I don't look at, I know you probably see it differently, but I don't see myself as doing anything special from the standpoint of all these things I've gone after. I've gone after for the right reasons. I love playing football. I love, I was that kid that was a gym rat. Like you talked to any of my buddies from way back when, when I was in eighth grade, I was always in the playground. I was always on that play field. I always had a ball in my hand. I was shooting hoops when nobody was else there. I was always that gym rat, right? And and that just kept accelerating me th- through these different levels that I kept going to from high school into college and college into pro. And I just had a relentless mindset to keep going. And then I started mountain climbing and the same thing. You know, rather than look at all seven and being overwhelmed by that, you know, I really focused on, on, on just – one mountain at a time. What do I need to do? And when was that? What are the logistics? How do I get there? How is this going to be different? And then, you know, because the kind of compilation of these different things, then came the film. And, and you know, with the film, the film, and we had executive producers. But again, at the core of it, I was doing what my true love was. I wasn't mm-hmm. doing this for a award. I wasn't doing this to, you know, get more Instagram followers. I was doing this because of the love of the game of climbing and doing things and being physical. I saw this movie not too long ago. It had to do with the guy who invented uh, snowboarding. And he got to 60 and everybody's like, God, you've, you've accomplished so much. And they said, why don't you slow down? Just really taste the fruits of your, your labor. And he said, well, maybe all you guys need to accelerate and catch up. <laughs> and that's that's kind of the way I feel. You know, I've, I've got, I'm going down to Jackson Hole next weekend and I'm climbing this mountain called the Grand. It's very technical. It's scary looking rock. You know, it's going straight up. Um, tied in, climbing up the rock face. 
And then uh, I'm training for that because then I'm flying over to Chamonix, France in, in, in September. I'm climbing Mount Blanc, which is the highest mountain in the, in the Alps. And then I'm going down in, into Switzerland in a little town called Germont. And there's the, the famous and infamous Matterhorn. Oh. And so that's going to be intense, you know, and I just want to keep setting these goals and going after it. And it, get, it gives me up. My greatest joy is, is I get up every single morning, like with my hands in the air, like Yahoo, yippee, I'm ready to go. And I get out there and I get after it for an hour and a half. And then I work all day at Sports Illustrated and we transform that too. I've taken the exact same principle, that, that pyramid of success of what I was talking about, like all those fine little details and do it with a passion and a purpose. And it's amazing at what, what can transpire. When we took over Sports Illustrated uh, three years ago now, they were an old brand. It was tired. It was worn out. And we've elevated Sports Illustrated now to number five um, in the in the rankings Um you know, in terms of the online presence, ESPN is number two. We're right behind CBS. And so we've gone from being completely irrelevant to very relevant and we'll continue to climb up um, this year. I think we're going to end up at number three. And it's really cool. It's the same thing. It's the same principle. So my last question, you're involved with also two foundations, one of which helps support uh, epilepsy, which uh, is, according to Wikipedia, your daughter has, so in honor of your daughter. So wishing her all the best as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, also Absolutely. veterans, uh, also veterans, higher ground, something that supports them. So just describe and ha- describe to the fans how they can support those causes. Yeah, well, I mean, bottom line is this, is that um, I, 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 they're kind of rolled up into one, but um, my daughter does have epilepsy. By the way, she, in this, this, we could go off in a whole another hour long show on why and, and because and everything else. But the bottom line is she has not had a seizure in a year and a half. And it's almost been a, a miracle. And it's in, in the many different ways, I think it's through the empowerment of some of these things that I've done, which have kind of put her up on a pedestal as a spokesperson uh, that have helped in part to, to, get her over the hump of having these different daily seizures that she would have. Um, I partner with a company here in, in a nonprofit here in, in Sun Valley called Higher Ground. And they do um, spend a lot of time bringing in um, a lot of veterans. It's again, it's all about that word empowerment. And it's getting them to go fly fishing and mountain bike riding. You know, a lot of these guys are damaged with, with, you know, their legs were blown off or they've got some PTSD and things like that. And, and they've lost their confidence. So getting them back out in nature and doing different things has really helped them along. And so um, if anybody, you know, is listening on the show, you can find out about more about me, about my journey. You can find the movie. I also have a podcast called Finding Your Summit. It's all at MarkPattisonNFL.com. You can check that out. You can check out into my social at Mark Patterson NFL. Um, but you can go there and you can see the links to, to higher ground if you want to make a donation. Um, it's a great Great cause, great organization. Everything goes 100% directly to them. Um, so that's what it is. And, you know, it's been a, a lot of fun, very gratifying in this whole journey to to originally start out about me and then transition it to, you know, how can I reshine that light on other people? Well, I, I would like to help you with that. And I'm actually doing an awards, uh, a sports awards dinner on Thursday and hosting it and uh, DJing it and emceeing it. Uh, you get me the information. I'll definitely get people to absolutely donate money uh, to that great cause. Uh, we Love really it. appreciate you. Somebody like you, people should look up to because w- when you you look at all the great things you've done and, and the things that you have moved forward in your life, not even, even as a football player, but everything that you've done, you try to be the best at what you do. And that's something that you, everybody should want to do and be like and i'm one of those guys too with radio and everything like that and i just read a little bit about you at sports illustrated that's a that's unbelievable you're a big you're a big part of the growth of sports illustrated i see right here so yeah it's unbelievable sports illustrated is a known magazine it's it's a magazine at one point that was you know flustered and it wasn't where it needed to be and uh now it's it's starting to grow again and it's getting back on that top five scale so that that has a lot to do with you, and that shows you everybody that if, if if you put your heart and soul into everything that you do, you're going to try to you'll be able to bring that to the being the best at what you can be. So we really exactly appreciate it. you. We really we really appreciate you. Uh, we'll stay in touch. I definitely would like to talk more about everything that you're doing, even off off air, because I think you're an amazing man, Mark, and and, and a person like you is somebody that I strive to be as as a radio guy and as uh, you know, an entertainer. So I really appreciate everything that you've done and, 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 and really appreciate you joining us tonight. Absolutely. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Again, big shout out to Kenny. You guys can have a great <laughs> chat with him afterwards, but uh, love what you guys are doing you. and bring guys like me, you know, on your show to, to share our stories and, 
you know, there's always something bigger. It should be bigger, at least, you know, in my mind about why you get into certain things and just being open to change and possibilities. And it's amazing what you can accomplish. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Very well said. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Take care, guys.